doing things like, um, as you said, Jimmy Edwards. So I was veering towards comedy in a small way on television. And then they were casting for I'm All Right Jack, for the girl in I'm All Right Jack, because there was only one girl in it. And I still hadn't got an agent. I would be traipsing around with photographs and trying to get, you know, work. And um, they had seen virtually every actress for the part of the girl. I don't know how many of you have seen I'm All Right Jack. Yeah. Uh, well, Spotlight, uh, Richard Attenborough suggested to the Boltings, he said, why don't you contact Spotlight? Because they might have someone known out there, um, you know, someone that they've not seen to play this sexy daughter of Peter Sellers. So I was contacted by Spotlight through virtually yeah. Richard Attenborough, but he remembered, his name was Kenneth Seal, and he said, I've always remembered you because of the bad adjudication you got for comedy. And so I was sent to Shepperton, and uh, I got the part in I'm All Right Jack, which kicked off my film career. So I veered from something or other, whatever I started with. But it is, what did I start with anyway? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm sure that was interesting. I'm sure that was interesting because it's. I did extra work. I mean, I don't think any of us think, consider that extra work is exactly a good stepping stone to one's career. I think you were both in um, Doctor at Large. No. But Doctor, in, Doctor in Love. Doctor in Love. Um, but probably not at the same time on the shoot. Uh, but you, you both done some Julian's films, for instance. Again. What did you play in Doctor in Love? Oh, I can't remember. <laughs> Some young doctor, I think, student doctor, either side of the bed with uh, Bogart, uh, I think. Michael Craven. What? Michael Craven, I think, was <laughs> Was it? <laughs> <laughs> you, you got, was it the got, same Doctor film? Well, I was doctor in Love. Was it? it? Mm. Oh, there you go. You see, what you've got to understand, it's very <laughs> hard to understand this. It's hard, when, when I watch something, we go along and... Let's say <coughs> my my one little scene in Doctor Love. You, you get there, you, you do it. You get dressed up in some white coat or other, and you're hung round with a stethoscope or something, and you stand there and you look at these actors that you haven't met before. You haven't met James Roberts and Justice. You haven't met Dope Melgard or you haven't. And and you do it. You say it, and you go away again. So it goes in one ear and out of the other. That's why one can't remember a lot of the things a lot of the time. It's so much more vivid on the screen than it is while you're actually doing it. I mean, you were dressed in a white... I was undressed. <laughs> <laughs> well, right, right. yes, that's true. I was not undressed. I was never undressed, except in Centrinia. <laughs> which which Centrinia? Uh, Blue Murder at Centrinia, the middle one. You also came back for the, the Wildcats, there's a 1918 yes. revival, didn't you? Yes. And um, uh, there's a new symphony in school that had you out imminently. I know. Um, with Rupert Everett playing the Ursula Sin role. I know. So, yeah. but, I've seen the picture of him. Have you, I expect you yes, all have. Yes, he looks very much like Camilla Parker Bowles. <laughs> <laughs> he looks exactly like Camilla Parker <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm wondering, again, if I'm not interrupting, but this I think is quite funny, but I was taken to see a film recently um, and I didn't know what I was going to see and it turned out to be Run That Boy Run which I hated <laughs> and last week I was at BAFTA and there were all tables and each table was the Walt Disney table, this table and that table and there was a host on each table, some sort of celebrity and uh, I was obviously on one and I was on the Walt Disney table and the man on my right, we were all crowded together all the tables, the man on my right said this is, up to, this is pertinent to St. Julian's, the man on my right said, have you seen any films lately? And I said, oh yes, I saw this dreadful film, I said, from Run Fat Boy Run, I said I thought it was awful, I said it was typically British, it was all farting and swearing and I said it was ghastly 
And the man sitting here with his back to me said, I produced that. <laughs> and he then said, and I was quite shocked, but would not retract. Um, he said that he had just produced St. Trinian's. And uh, he said, you were in one of the St. Trinian's, weren't you? And I said, yes. And he said, well, would you like to come to the premiere, which is on the 10th of December? So perhaps you can sort of get into that if you were in one of the two. Mine was the pure hell of St. Trinian's. And yours was which one? The second one, Blue Murder. Blue Murder of St. Trinian's. Was yours the first or the third? Oh, no, yes. no, no. Thank you. It's right to speak. I know you, you took a film which you made 50 years ago. Have you ever got to the situation where you've watched a film and forgotten you're in it? Absolutely. <laughs> yes. And I've even seen my own name in the Radio Times. <laughs> <laughs> and that was a film with Joyce Grenfell, and I was her, her dressmaker. She was going to get married, and I, I, I you know, saw it as I say in the Radio Times, looked up and thought, oh, Joyce Grenfell, and then I saw my own name, and I thought I have no connection with that at all. But I, then I did, really, culturally, in my poor brain, I did remember it. Which right. film was that? I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I think it's true, isn't it, for writers or fans when we go and interview people, actors who've worked in stuff. I think it was 40 years, it was a long, long time ago. It was a, a, it was a job, it was work. You're not going to remember every detail and anecdotes and things that happened all that time ago. It's quite, well, we expect them, you as performers, to remember everything that happened in every job that you've done. Of course, it's just impossible. I, I think, Andrew, you were saying about um, some of the people you've spoken to for your book. But, um, Lots of great anecdotes, but not necessarily reliable. No, I mean you have to double check, and triple check, you know, all the time because you often find that it was. When in fact, if you read John of Missouri's autobiography, the date of his wedding is wrong. I mean, everything is completely wrong. And there you hope you hope you get some facts. So of course it is. It, it's true. You know, people don't remember. And why should they? It was a long time ago. And I went to see um, uh, and, uh, Fulton and Simpson. Project. And of course, they've given thousands and thousands of interviews over the years, mainly about things, about things. and they were terribly nice and everything. But of course, you know, it was, it was a long, long time ago. It was, uh, it was just a and also, if I could just interject here, you see, at the beginning of the carry ons, I was in numbers two and three. Now, when we made Carry On Nurse, Carry On Sergeant hadn't come out yet, and so we thought it was absolute rubbish. We thought, oh, what are we doing here playing these charades? You know, what, what are we doing? And actually it was it was sort of quite fun to carry on nurse because I had a, an easy peasy part and there was wonderful Joan Hicks in it. And that was very pleasant to see. So you just thought, well we're going to play these silly charades and that'll be that without thinking about it. Lo and behold, then they started the yeah, carry on teacher which was um, uh, much uh, better in a way. But um, Kenneth Williams, I mean, in the mornings, he was just so rude <laughs> <laughs> to everybody and in such a bad temper. And his language was totally, totally filthy early in the morning. And you thought, oh, stop it, get out. But again, one had. I thought it was the next stage of charades, you know, sh slightly better charades this time. Um, and no notion of what they would become. And that was just, that was the third one we're talking about now. So then thereafter, when Liz came on, they got 